Is there a way to avoid writing on the nose dialogue? Yes, there, with dialogue, obviously the best thing you can do with dialogue is recognize when you go out and you listen to conversation. People do not speak in complete sentences. And you record or you think about how are people speaking in a way that feels authentic. And dialogue also reveals so much about things like character traits and flaws and life phases. So you want to think about things like where is this character in their life? And when I look at the life process, is my dialogue reflective of where this character is? Is my dialogue reflective of the want? Is my dialogue reflective of the conflict that the character might feel internally? Is my dialogue reflective? You always want to think something in scene work. You always want to think of is the char is the scene revealing character while advancing plot? How do you write emotion without stating emotion? That's a great question. Emotion all comes down to the setup of things like the dream, the biggest fear, the audience feeling the void. So when you enter the story, you want to think about the idea of what is making the character stuck when we enter the story. And the feeling of what is making the character stuck when we enter the story goes into the setup of the emotional arc. So you're not hitting on the head what the emotion is instead you're giving us a sense through subtext of the void and then you're escalating the emotional arc through understanding what is getting in the way uh, with the void and how the pursuit can help the character process the past so that they can move toward the future goal. I'm thinking too about want. How do you how do you state want in dialogue? Like I'm thinking back to the to the White Lotus. Yes. And the Jennifer Coolidge character has found this this young woman who will just sort of listen to her and be yes. her sounding board. Yes. But she's also manipulating her. Yeah. And it's revealed in these little tells about the business. Oh, I don't have to. Well, we'll talk about that later, right? Yeah. But she she throws it out and then she takes it away again. Yes. Yes. So. <laughs> I think with dialogue, the, there's a value in the subtext of the want, like you're describing. I also think that the want is something that you can hit on the nose with the character just declaring, I want blank. And I, I think that, that I have seen that done incredibly well where it's great for the audience because you clearly know what the character wants. So there's a value in the subtext as long as we don't miss the want. And there is a value in the dialogue sometimes defining the want on the nose for the audience. Yeah, so you could see both wants were very clear the, the Jennifer Coolidge character wanted to be needed. Mm -hmm. And then the other woman was hoping to make it out of this sort of hotel treadmill of working, you know, behind yes. the scenes with these these clients. And so both both wants are very present in yes. like the dinner conversation. They yes. I think they'd gone out to dinner. Yes. And yeah. And you could see in those wants, in that that's a great thing to to illustrate. You can see in the wants of those two characters that it has to, with Jennifer Coolidge, it has to do with what's making her stuck and how the dream and being in business with the other woman could be an answer for her. And for the other woman, 
Jennifer's being stuck and needing to go in a direction could be an advantage for her. So when you look at the want, I always say when you're setting up co-protagonists, we need to understand how one is the answer to the other's dilemma. And that comes down to want. Like when you look at the show Hacks and you have a sense of uh, Deborah's character and the idea of her being in the life phase where work is stopping because of her age and you contrast that with a younger character who's asked to help punch up her jokes which could help her dilemma and then with the younger character you also have work is stopping because of something she said on Twitter that caused her career that was blossoming to suddenly stop. So you have two characters who their wants are in connection and they are the answer to the other's dilemma. What should a writer know about monologues or should a writer of try to avoid monologues in their uh, film or, or TV or play? I love that question. I think that so many story experts will say no more than four to five lines of dialogue. So of course, when you hit a monologue, you're going way over that. If the monologue serves the intention of the story, there is value in the monologue. When you look at Aaron Sorkin, who could have a full page or two pages worth, then it, and it serves the story in such a brilliant way that brings you to a sense of depth and understanding of the character, there's a value. However, just know that the rule of thumb is you should have four to five lines of dialogue. So the value of brevity, the value uh, I often tell writers you want to look at these big huge chunks of dialogue and figure out how you can say the same thing in less words. What is the focal point of the intention and how can you hit the same depth because the consequence of too many words is you lose the focal point. Certainly in comedy, when you're looking at cadence and you're looking at the cadence when you have over three to four lines of dialogue, you lose that cadence. The joke gets buried because there are so many words. So, so there's a value in the monologue if it serves the intention, but there's also a value in can you say something with the same amount of depth without so many words. Yeah, I'm thinking one, one place, and this is an old reference, but Say Anything with John Cusack. Yes. And where he goes on this sort of tirade about he doesn't want to, you know, produce anything. You know, he, he, you see this guy's like anti-corporate, anti-consumerism. Like he, he shows that he's, this, this is who he is in yes. his monologue. Yes. You know, and here he's got this, this woman that he's in love with who's from like more of a wealthy and family. And it serves. Right, yes, right. So it shows the polarity. that's done incredibly well. That's right. a great example. That is done incredibly well because it serves the story and the character and the audience because it brings them into that desire. Right, so it shows it shows kind of who he is. Yes, it's very limited in yes. what he wants to do. Yes. There's not a lot of room, but he knows he likes being with her. Yeah, but they you know and they kind of come from these opposite worlds. And yes, and the polarity excellent. going mm -hmm. into yeah. that. Yes.